Welcome to Renewed and Redeemed, where we share stories of how God has renewed and redeemed the lives of everyday people. Today on episode 5, we have mother and daughter, Amanda and Sabrina, share how Jesus redeemed them from tormenting spirits and nightmares. They discovered there is power in the name of Jesus and his blood. We hope this episode blesses you. Hey everyone, welcome to Renewed and Redeemed. Today we have an extra special show because we have a two for one uh, mother and daughter duo, Amanda and Sabrina. Thank you so much for being on the podcast today. So a little bit about Amanda and Sabrina. I've known them for probably about eight years. Amanda has just been a faithful friend of mine, but also I would say that she's a faithful friend of God. She is an amazing artist and painter, and both Sabrina and Amanda are so faithful in really carrying out the Great Commission and loving and encouraging people and pointing them towards Jesus. Sabrina is also very creative. She's an amazing singer, and she's just so kind and just has such a a sweet spirit. So I am so happy to have you on today and hear your story, and I truly believe that God's going to use this to really touch people's lives today. Okay, so a little icebreaker. You can take turns answering if you'd like. When someone finds out what you do, what do they always ask? Like, what's one of the first questions they ask that they want to know about what you do? Like, I know for me, when when I share that, you know, give out clothing on, on Tuesdays, we do a clothing outreach or a food outreach, they seem to be really comfortable with asking me about how can they join in with that or how can they contribute with that. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. What about you, Sabrina? I would say they, a lot of people usually know like how I got to the point where I am. So I'll, t- I'll try and share my testimony with them a little bit. And then I'll share like what Jesus is doing in my life and go from there. Okay. That's awesome. I lo- that's good. So for both of you, what was your life like before you knew Jesus? Like what was going on in your life? Okay. Well, for me, my life was, I was pretty much, you know, going off a cliff. I was going through a divorce. I was drinking heavily every week until I blacked out, was belligerent, smoking like three packs of cigarettes a day. You know, lust was a problem. The divorce just crushed my heart. So I was very unstable, kind of latching on to anything and everything. And Sabrina, for me, I was... I was pretty a fearful kid when I was younger, um, before Jesus, and I was left at home by myself a lot, like, for the whole night. I had terrible nightmares um, when I was a kid, and they okay. were pretty, like, tormenting, and so I was just a fearful kid, and I didn't really know what I was mm-hmm. doing. So how did you really come to know Jesus like you do now and decide to give your life to him? Um, well, for me, things got uh, a lot worse, and, and I, I reached out to a neighbor and she gave me a phone number, I reached out to that person, and he prayed with me and got to meet some other people and they prayed with me and they shared that Jesus was the way out from all the chaos that was happening um, in my life. And so I accepted Jesus then and that was November 19th, 2012. Wow, okay. And then for me, I accepted Jesus that same day, but in the evening, somebody had told me about who Jesus was and how like he could change my life. And so that night I accepted Jesus into my life. Did you know that your mom had earlier given her life to, to Jesus, Sabrina? I don't remember. I, I actually think I do. I remember a, a little bit. I think he told me just briefly. Okay. All right, Amanda, so you said you reached out to a neighbor. What did you, Had your neighbor been sharing Jesus with you before or something? Like, how did you know that that was a place to go? Um. <sighs> Not really. She was really the the very last person that I would have wanted to call because I was really paranoid thinking that whoever I called, the, the devil was going to go after that person. Yeah. And like punish them. So I didn't okay. really want to call my sweet elderly neighbor next door, but I didn't know what else to do. Okay. And how did she react when you, when you did contact her? Well, when I called her, I was so ashamed of my own situation that I just said, hey, I have a friend in the car that needs help. 
okay. I couldn't even, couldn't even say it was me. And so she said, oh, what kind of help? And, you know, through the conversation, it was a very short conversation, but she said, oh, I might have someone that might help you. I have his phone number from years ago. He was a pastor at um, a church okay. that she used to go to. So she okay. gave me his number. Okay, cool. So what exactly happened immediately after both of you giving your lives to Jesus? Like, what, what was the immediate effects of that? The It was, uh, I guess, so now I knew that Jesus was the way out. And so I just put all my trust in in him. They gave me a Bible and they gave me two verses. And so I was trying to read the verses and, you know, trying to, you know, read the Bible. It's really difficult for me. So I just, I got some Jesus movies, you know, I uh-huh. start, start, I needed like bite-sized uh, pieces to really digest the, the word. Started writing scripture on note cards, on index cards. My whole bed was full of index cards. Um, wow. Yeah, and just really, you know, really kind of using his word as the weapon I had against the the spirits uh, that were still lingering in my house. And then it was just one night where I felt a message from from God saying that every time I pray to cover me and Sabrina with the blood of Jesus, that it's the actual blood of my son. And once I got that message, it changed everything. That was the deal breaker because... It just, I, I just said to all the demonic spirits, you know, in the name of Jesus, I cast you out of my house. Right. And it went from my head to my heart, seeing the blood of Jesus covering me and Sabrina. I had to close my eyes and actually see the blood of Jesus covering both of us, you know, and then right. just said that. And then they left. They walked out north, south, right. east, east. And, and it was like then that the line of Judah just rose up in me and said, Nope, she's with me. And that, that yeah. was the woman. Yeah. So I find a couple of things interesting about that. One, I think it's important to note that even though you had given your life to Jesus, you were still experiencing kind of torment or even just annoyances from, you know, evil spirits, you know, and that that wasn't just immediately gone because you gave your life to Jesus. You actually had to use your authority that uh, Jesus had given you to take care of that. I think that's really important to note for people because a lot of times I think that might, if they don't realize that they still might have to deal with some stuff after they give their lives to Jesus, they might get discouraged. Yeah. And I think that, you know, kind of went on for, you know, a few, like, like the probably like three weeks, I think it went on where I was still calling that person at two or three o'clock in the morning, just oh, saying, wow. hey, they're, they're back. You know, what do I do? That fear would creep in again. And uh-huh. it was a constant, constant battle for like three weeks, just me in my house where, you know, just battling this stuff. So. Right. Wow. And that's also amazing that, you know, somebody was willing to let you call them around the clock, yes. you know, and we should be that for other people that are also needing help. That's, that's very encouraging. Yeah. So what about you, Sabrina? So for me, when so before I met Jesus, I had like terrible nightmares, and I have like the same three or four like every um, night, and they were tormenting, and I couldn't like scream in my sleep. After I accepted Jesus, um, about like a week later, I had realized that I hadn't had one of those like tormenting nightmares. Wow! And, like throughout the entire week, and so I talked to my mom about it, and we kind of realized after we were like, oh well, Jesus, he delivered me from nightmares. Wow! And like you can't go to CVS or to Walgreens or to like a doctor really and ask them for a prescription to get rid of your nightmares. Right. Because it, that doesn't exist. And so it was only God that could have really, you know, gotten rid of my nightmares and he did. Absolutely. And just like your mom was saying about the covering of Jesus' blood, I think that probably also was tied to that, just the protection. Yeah. So like, what about now? You know, it's been several years since you've both given your life to, to God. How is your life different now? And how is it um, compared to pre-Jesus? Yeah, I think now that I know that his presence is with me all the time, that he would never leave me, you know, never to forsake me. And he will be with me always till the end of time. I think knowing that has given me great comfort. Because it, whatever I'm surrounded 
with or whatever the world can throw at me. You know, even in my my own, you know, walk of when I want to be like selfish or, or I'm this way or that way, not even walking right, great is his faithfulness. So even though I fall short, you know, every single day, it just... I know that he will not turn away from me. He will not um, leave me. Right. So good. So good. What about you, Sabrina? Um, I would say for me, I've now I know my purpose in life and I'm able to just kind of minister to middle school kids who don't really know their purpose. And since I was, I accepted Jesus somewhere beginning of high school. So I know like what middle school kids go through. Right. And, and how they feel. And so just being able to now go back into the brokenness, but not to be of the broken world, but right. to help others come out and find Jesus. I would say that would be how I feel now and just finding my purpose and wow. being able to help others. And, yeah. So good. That's so good. I love that. So for each of you, if you had to pick out one lesson that you've learned in your life so far through all of this, that you feel like if you you could help somebody and share it with the world, what would that be? I would say, you know, just to talk to Jesus. Don't be afraid to, to engage in the relationship that you have with him. He's not just uh, like a story in a book. He's right. actually a person. So while you're in the car, turn off the music, turn mm-hmm. off everything and just engage. We are spiritual beings. And so we engage with heaven when, whenever you can engage with heaven. Um, because it's just, it's just the most fulfilling experience you will ever have is, you know, communing with him. Yes. Yes. That's good. Yeah. And you can even come to him, even if you're not sure even if you believe in him or you feel like you, he might be disappointed in you or anything like that, you can still come to him with that. He's not offended by it and he's wanting you to reach out to him. He wants to show you who he really is. And I think that some people might be afraid to talk to him like they might be in trouble or something like that. And that's that's really not the case. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I would say for me, like kind of going off of that, just for people to realize that God has a plan for them mm. and he has like, a future. He already knows everything that, you know, you're, that he is already planned out. And so you don't have to worry. You don't have to be fearful because right. God knows all of that. And so you just have to follow him and he'll show you his path for your life because his path is so much greater than ours. Yes. Amen. <laughs> like that Jeremiah 29, 11 promise. Like right. it's a big yeah, that's good. That's really good. So did you have anything else to do wanted to share before we close out? Do you want to talk anything about, you know, the ministries that you're involved in or your hope for the future or anything like that? I think, yeah, you know, for me, I really, you know, like sometimes you go through life and you, you know, like you're, you're peaceful and you know, you feel like you know Jesus and you're reading your Bible and then something happens in your life and you get really overwhelmed. And you get kind of lost in the sauce and you kind of lose your way a little bit, you know. And I know in those times, you know, it's, you know, don't be afraid to reach out to a a friend who will help you just help you back up again to refocus and realign yourself with Jesus. Because you need those, you need a connection with your spiritual family. They will help you get back up and put a, a, a promise of Jesus before the overwhelming problem that you're facing instead of the other way around. Because right. sometimes you can get so lost and overwhelmed with the amount of things you have to do and the promises kind of go wayside. But mm. they will remind you to put the, the promises of Jesus, which are very much alive in front of that problem. And it changes everything. Right. That's so good. Sabrina, do you have anything? I don't think so. Okay. That's okay. That's all right. Um, She has one story. I have a story. Oh, good. Yeah, let's hear that. So about like two weeks ago, we did a camp for our youth. And one of the girls there who I've known for like like 12, 13 years, she was our old neighbor. And so I was able to sit down and have a conversation with her about who Jesus is. And I was able to tell her how in the Old Testament, 
for them to be forgiven of their sins, they had to sacrifice a lamb. Right. And I told her how when Jesus came, he was the final lamb that had to be, you know, slain, but that's it. He saved you. He saved your sins and he forgives you. And she never really understood that when I told her it before all the previous years, but at camp, she understood it. And wow. spoke to her about it. And he touched her heart because she started crying about that. Wow. And she's like, oh, Jesus really can forgive me of my sin. Like she realized the pain that he went through mm. and it kind of touched her heart. And so she was able just to come to a realization that, you know, Jesus loves her and he forgives her for everything that he's, that she's done. And wow. so. Okay. Yeah. And how many times did you witness to her? Before? Uh, yeah. I witnessed her like years, like so many times. Yeah. You're a patient fruit of the spirit. Yeah. <laughs> so good. Oh, praise God. That's awesome. Yeah. It just shows us. I mean, I know like from my own life, people, when I kind of had walked away from the Lord and then just kind of was not living for him at all, you know, many people were saying they're praying for me or you know, trying to encourage me to come back to him. And I was just like, no way, you know, <laughs> that's not going to happen ever. <laughs> and then like 15 years later, I think it was after that, finally, you know, and I know that during that time, many people were faithful and praying for me and, you know, reaching out to me. And it just shows me mm-hmm. that Jesus, God has never given up on us. And really we can't give up on other people either, even though it may be frustrating or hard. Sometimes I feel very convicted that we should be faithful, just like yeah. he is faithful. Yeah. And don't give up. Yeah. Don't give up. Yeah. That's so good. Well, thank you for sharing that. Do one of you want to close us out in prayer and just pray for people to really, I guess, maybe understand the gospel and what Jesus did in a way that they hadn't before, just that they'll be able to spend some time hearing from him and communing with him and also maybe for patience and persistence and all the other things that we talked about. Dear God, I just thank you for this time. I thank you that you, we get to use the internet platform to share our story and share your story. God, I pray for everybody that's listening to this, that you would reveal yourself to them, that you would show them who you are and your plans are for their life. I pray for just peace and persistence for um, anybody listening to this and that you would just touch everyone's heart, that you would be with them, that people would realize they have a purpose in you, Lord, that You would just continue to just speak to all of us and love on us. And we thank you for this time. And I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us today. Please consider subscribing to our podcast and sharing it with your friends. For more information on Renewed and Redeemed and to check out our Bible study, blog, and shop, please visit us at renew-redeem.com. We'd love to hear from you if you need prayer, have a question, would like to share a testimony, or give your life to Jesus.